Hey guys, we're going to read chapter 17 of the Hound Dog True. Here we go. Chapter 17. She knows, Maddie thinks. Same as she thought with Star. She knows. Knows what? Maddie still cannot say. Not some horrible secret. There is not something in the stories, just that there are stories that came from someplace inside her that they matter. So it's like her personal stuff. She knows, Maddie thinks, and she does not want to be my friend. Out in the garden, Uncle Potluck is singing about messages in bottles, about sending an SOS. She should be with him out in the garden helping, not thinking about stupid things like stories and friends. Maddie swats the notebook closed, slaps it under the pillow, runs out of the room, down the hall, and out into the garden. That you, Maddie May? Uncle Potluck peers around a corn stalk. I came out to help, Maddie says. Can't say there is much to do out here right now. Even We're even down to the last of the corn. Tomorrow, we'll have ourselves a big corn feast. Invite Crystal and Quincy. Tommy will invite himself. That sound okay to you? No, Maddie thinks. Uncle Potluck pushes his hat back on his head. He wants to see her better, Maddie knows, but she turns her face down toward the garden dirt. You sure there is nothing I can do to help? She says, well, there are a few stray weeds here and there. It would be a favor to me if you could rid the place of them. Maddie nods fast. Which ones are the weeds? Follow me, Uncle Potluck leads her to the edge of the corn patch points to a slender yellow blade of grass poking out of the soil, kneels to pluck it out, hoots. Maddie kneels like Uncle Potluck does, hoots too. I admire your attention to detail, Maddie May, but unless you have a traitor's knee, that last part is optional. Uncle Potluck sits on the grass. You go ahead and weed now. I'll supervise. There isn't much to weed. She'll be done in two minutes, maybe three. But Maddie does not want to be done, does not want to think about anything but being a help to Uncle Potluck. How did your knee get traitorous? She asks, hoping there will be a story behind it. There is. Stella, Uncle Potluck says. Uncle Potluck has had lots of girlfriends, Maddie knows, made some of them mad too. But she can't imagine him ever making one of them mad enough to bust his knee up. Stella, 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 Uncle Pollock says, laziest dog in the United States Army. Dog? Dog. Stella was one of the small squadron of pound dogs rescued from imminent demise, brought to Fort Kin Kincaid to train with me and my fellow MPs as trackers. It was an honor most of those dogs took seriously. All Stella wanted to take was a nap. There's another one infiltrating the carrot patch, see? Uncle Potluck points to a short, scrawny weed. It is nearly dead, but Maddie rushes to pluck it anyway. It was suggested by my superiors that Stella's lack of initiative was a cry for increased training. I don't think I need to tell you that I was not at liberty to disregard the suggestion of my superiors. Instead, I disregarded that evening's weather forecast. Certain that Stella and I would conclude our training long before the predicted storm blew in. I doused a buddy of mine in Old Spice and sent him out to lay a trail in the nearby woods. Half an hour later, he returned telling me he had made a simple loop through the trees, one so obvious even an unmotivated hound like Stella could follow it. Now the forecast storm was one of many we had endured that week and the woods were muddy. At first, Stella seemed to have caught the scent. After an hour of wandering though, I was convinced she was lost. And I am embarrassed to say, so was I. Which is when the storm blew in, complete with light show and sound effects. Lightning? Maddie asks, and done, which I should dis which I soon discovered was a particular fear of my hound dog colleague. One boom, and she bolted. I raced after her, slipping and sliding in the mud, 
barely keeping a hold on her leash when, bang, the earth gave way and my right leg dropped deep into a gopher hole. My left leg, unaware of the situation, continued after Stella. I will spare you a description of the pain I then endured and the vocabulary offenses I thus unleashed. But I will tell you that with all my yelling and cursing, I also unleashed Stella, who tore off into the woods and there is a buzzing sound and Uncle Potluck packs his shirt pocket, searching for his cell phone. Maddie finishes his sentence. And that's how you got your traitorous name. Uncle Paula hoots as he stands. Custodial arts, he says into the phone. It's on my laptop, he says, heading for the house. Just a minute. Poor Uncle Paula, Maddie thinks, just trying to help a dog and getting his knee busted. Poor Stella, too. Maddie pulls a weed from the turnip row, looks around for another. There are no more weeds to pull, nothing she can do. If she were mama, she'd say the going had gotten tough. If she were mama, she would get going. But where is she supposed to go? She cannot follow Uncle Paula, cannot write in her notebook, does not want to go back in her room or to the tent or to the rock on the rise. Instead, Maddie stands there, weeds in her hand, not going anywhere. Not looking, not looking, not looking at the spot where Miss Sweet's car used to be. All right, guys, and that was chapter 17. I'll see you later for chapter 18. Bye.